All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Health Talk. I'm uh, Peter Christian. John King is over there. Good morning, John. Good morning, Peter. Fabulous weekend. We had uh, beautiful sunshine, great days. Of course, I wouldn't know that having been inside at the Home and Garden Show both <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. But that's that's neither or neither here nor there. It is time for Health Talk, brought to you by Community Medical Center from day one. Dr. Tim Richards, good friend of mine, uh, a, a church buddy as well, as, as well as a magnificent surgeon and uh, and. Uh, a military veteran joining us here in studio. How are you, sir? Doing super. All right. So tell us a little bit about, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, 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 Dr. Tim Richards, even though you've been on the air doing commercials, things like that, you've been a guest before. Tell us a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you. Well, I'm a general surgeon here in Missoula, and I've been here, this is year 20 that I'm going on. Wow. Prior to that, I was a military surgeon for 12 years, uh, kind of do all kind of general surgery stuff, and been living here for a long time love montana hope to stay all right now one of the reasons you're here today is to talk about hernia surgery right correct all right so so now for the again uh, I, I i like to ask the dumb questions they leave those to me so you might want to just describe if you would uh, the clinical definition what is a hernia i mean we kind of know but maybe we don't know clinically what it means sure so a hernia can mean lots of things to lots of people but generally speaking the way i explain it to folks is that a hernia is some, something in your body poking through an area it's not supposed to poke through. So you okay. have a hole that's not supposed to be there, and something protrudes through it. So it can actually be within your intestines. It can be through your abdominal wall. It can be in all different places in your body. All right. So how does that happen? I mean, how does the... Uh, what, what I thought, this nice closed system in here. Uh, how, how does that... With uh, your six-pack, I know. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Actually, I've got more like a flab pack, but don't tell well, anybody. No, everybody has a keg. It's just the six-pack that's in it, right? So, yeah, so that's kinda, I like that. That's yeah. very good. So so how does that happen anyway? Well, I mean, most of these, are, I would say, were probably congenital. If you're looking at hernias in general, that people are probably born with it. But as they grow older, the weakness breaks down and this kind of blows open. Some were caused by surgery. I mean, when we put an incision on somebody, you cause a weakness in the wall of the abdomen, and that can break down very easily. Uh, different people with medical problems, diabetes, uh, smokers, things like that actually can weaken the abdominal wall. People who do heavy lifting can break down the wall. Uh, and some people are just more prone to it. It can actually be hereditary. So if someone has a hernia, but it's inside them, right? So they can't see. Maybe it doesn't hurt. So is it possible that you have a hernia for a long time and don't even know you have one? Absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, those are internal hernias or things that generally come out and create an emergency problem. So like if you have a piece of bowel sticking through another part of the bowel, that those kind of internal hernias like that usually present as emergencies. But for the most part, the ones on the outside, the ones that you all see, you're going to detect it either through pain or a bulge or you know, uh, you'll kind of know that something's happening. Hmm. So when, when someone thinks, it's, thinks they have a hernia, hmm. what's the process? Do you just start tearing open or do you take a, <laughs> take a picture of the inside well, somehow there, or what? There is a zipper there, you know, <laughs> so we can check. <laughs> Rip out the stuffing. And... Yeah, we usually don't use the term tear it open, actually. That's, <laughs> that's, you know, that won't get you very many patients. Uh, but, it, you know, for the, for the first part of that thing, it's, you know, you'd go see your primary care doctor or come see us or one of those, you know, somebody who can actually make the diagnosis. And sometimes a lot of people think they have a hernia because they have pain, but they really don't. Um, so you'd probably see your primary care doc first, and then your primary care doc would either refer them to us. Now, if there's a question of it, what kind of things we can do, we can do ultrasounds. Uh, we can do CT scans. Ultrasounds are a little bit better. Uh, those are the kind of things you'd look at to see if somebody has a hernia. Now, you, you had mentioned that sometimes it, it can actually be surgery itself that may uh, make it more possible to have a hernia. Right. What about things like bariatric surgery? I know that's a, that could be a very serious surgery sure. for folks who are trying to lose weight. Uh, is that some, do the bariatric surgeons say, okay, there could be a possibility of hernia in the future, so take precautions, that sort of thing, right? Well, I mean, Unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. Bariatric surgery is a good thing for yeah. folks. It takes care of a lot of other medical problems. But those people, a huge proportion of them actually will develop a hernia in the sites from where their surgery are. It just has to do with losing the weight um, and, and those kind of and the nutritional aspects of all that that goes along with it makes it so they don't heal as well. But they have a very high incidence of hernia formation. So what does the term hernia actually mean? Because I've heard it used like a herniated disc. Right. So that's a, it's a bulge. So, okay, right. any bulge, it can be in a bone, it can be in well, a... Well, it's not like Peter's keg. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a little it's different. more like a balloon. Nice <laughs> there. Not, 
but that's a little <laughs> different. Um, no, yeah. but essentially, it's it's a bulge that's not supposed to be there, protruding through another area. So, a bulging disc is a herniated disc. In other words, bulging outside the limits of where it's supposed to be. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, is this something that most people experience in their life, or is it essentially one in four people will actually develop? inguinal hernias. And so they're terrifically common. And actually, if you see most, uh, uh, vast majority of pregnant ladies will have a little belly button hernia, an umbilical hernia, just with the pressure that exists there. But those usually go away because it stretches the tissue there. And so you develop a little small hernia. And then as when the, they're no longer pregnant, that goes back together again. And so what, what, obviously, uh, you, you said some of these are like emergency hernias sure. where you got to go in. So how does someone know if they might be at that point? I mean, they're going to be sick. They're going to be feeling it. Right. Primarily pain. Usually it's pain. And uh, pain's probably the primary one. But, I mean, if you have a piece of bowel that's stuck through there, then they'll, be, they'll have what we call a bowel obstruction. They'll be throwing up and sick. Uh, so that's something that would initiate a, you know, either okay. a call or go into the emergency room. The alarm is clear, in other words, right. usually for that sort of thing. Yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty straightforward. All right, yeah. so listen, our lines are open. If you have a question for Dr. Tim Richards, give us a call, 721-1290, You can also uh, make your comments or questions on our Facebook page. This is Health Talk, and it's uh, sponsored by Community Medical Center. We're going to come right back with uh, more of Talk Back, or I should say Health Talk, here in just a moment. So thanks for joining us here on, uh, on this Monday edition, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. This is uh, Health Talk, and I'm Peter Christian, John King. Dr. Tim Richards joining us here in the studio. Yeah, so earlier you mentioned that there's uh, stuff that we do that can cause hernias. You had mentioned lifting, getting pregnant, <laughs> a couple other things. I don't think you had to worry about that part. Oh, no. uh, my wife's worried, trust me. Um, my question for you, I've got this bulge here. We don't know what it is. Um, the question for you, though, is, is how do you prepare? Beer. It's called beer. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, how do you prevent uh, those activities or, or do those activities in a way that you don't cause a hernia? You know, you really can't. It's one of those things that um, if you have the weakness or the propensity, the, the hereditary to sit there and develop it, you're going to probably get one with just your daily activities to begin with. You know, you could lay around in bed and not do anything your entire life, and, but that's no way to, to live. So I'd sit there and say, just do what you're doing. Um, I mean, lifting and all that other stuff, if you're going to get a hernia, you're going to probably get one. Hmm. Now, now, one of the things that I, I have noticed since visiting with you before, because we've done several ads about this new robotic surgery that right. you do, uh, it, tell us about you know how, how hernia surgery was done in the past as opposed to how it is today. Sure. I mean, and <clears throat> i got to be careful because I get all excited when I start talking about the robot. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, Go for not, it, man. But, uh, <laughs> you know, f- forever and ever we've done open hernia surgery. You know, the way surgery was done uh, 100 years ago is totally different than what we're doing now. And when you're doing it, what we call the open repair, where you tear somebody up, you know, you cut them open, like, you know, or you do surgery on with them. Like surgical you're, precision, yeah, with I'm surgical sure. surgical precision. When, you're, when you operate on them, you create trauma to the, to the skin, the muscles and stuff below it, and it hurts. And we uh, got away from, by using mesh and things in there now that uh, we've developed, uh, it's less pain with the surgeries. People actually get better quicker. And the recurrence rate, or the coming back rate, as I tell patients, has decreased dramatically to less than 1% by using mesh. But when we're doing it in the open repairs, and I'm talking mostly about inguinal hernias, but this actually goes with just about all hernias. When you're doing it in the open way and using mesh, you have a possibility of getting what we call entrapped nerves, especially in the groin. And so when you have these entrapped nerves, when like when we're doing groin surgery, we have to tell somebody, well, you have a 10% incidence of having chronic pain. Well, chronic pain is no fun. Especially in the groin area. I don't mean to be a delicate. No, no but, that, that hurts. And, yeah. and so it's one of these things that then you have to go in and cut the nerves out. or you know. So it's one of these things that it, it's a significant problem. Well, the, and you know, I've done, I did hernia surgery that way for almost 30 years and doing the open procedure and actually uh, worked with a company when I was in the military developing some of the mesh products that they'd had there. And it was really you know, a real great thing. Patients got back to their work very quickly, but they still had quite a bit of pain. So come here about a year and a half ago, um, the Da Vinci company in, uh, was sitting there, the Da Vinci is the robot, you know, he was telling me, well, you need to do your inguinal hernias with, you know, with the robot. I said, that's totally silly. Now, I mean, now, now any, any surgeon, because, because you, you work with your hands, it's right. very, very delicate. And to, to think that a robot 
you want to give that up to a robot, that's got to be really hard to, to introduce to a surgeon. Well, again, it's not the robot doing it. It's me using okay. the robot. Okay. So it's, it's okay. actually me doing the surgery. Okay. But uh, so making a, a long story a little shorter here, it's one of those things that I went to a meeting and a buddy of mine who's a robot guru, you know, he and I are sitting in the back of the room and he's like, well, I'm fixing all my inguinal hernias with a robot. I'm saying, well, well, that's stupid. And he's like, well, no, you need to come take a look at this. And I did. And truthfully, the patients, they'd hardly hurt at all. I mean, there's, there are some that do, but for the vast majority of them, they don't hurt hardly at all. They get back to work almost immediately. Uh, it's really changed everything. And the visualization and everything with the robot is uh, tremendous. So, so what are the advantages of the robot? Just smaller, tiny little hands? Right. So one, you're not cutting through all the muscle to start with. So you're, when you're doing that, you have three little holes and you just like all other lapro, uh, laparoscopic surgery, excuse me. And so it's one of those things that using the robot has that, and the holes that, uh, because it's with the robot, the holes don't hurt hardly at all. Hmm. So the benefits of it is one is that you don't have the open procedure. You don't have to worry about the nerves at all. So the chronic pain part of that isn't there because the nerves are way, way out lateral. They're not really in your field of view of where you're operating on. So that concern for the entrapped nerves is not there. Um, you're not putting, we used to a long time ago put tacks in people when we were doing these laparoscopically, and those tacks hurt. But now with the robot, it's such fine precision that you see so well, you actually can suture just like you normally suture on the outside. So these sutures don't hurt, and the holes don't hurt, and the patient goes back to doing what they're doing right away. So you get up off the table and walk home if you want to. Pretty much. I mean, seriously. And it's one of those things that uh, – and. I had to be convinced of it, and I am totally convinced now. It, it's one of those things that, you know, I didn't believe it. So I, did your you know. did your friend call you stupid after you called oh, him yeah, stupid? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I've, I've done some commercials for you talking right. about this Da Vinci uh, robotic system. And one of the most remarkable stories was a guy who uh, had the surgery done and several days later decided to go out elk hunting. Right. Right? And <laughs> according – can you share that story with well, us? No, I mean, so I usually do these on – Friday is when I have my block time for this, but I, you know, I did him on a Friday, and that Sunday he got his bull elk back country and pulled it out of the, out of the back country. And wire. Now, if, if I'd have done that in an open fashion with right. you, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be doing that. Right. I mean, and then I had another guy that we ha- actually do have a commercial on who that afternoon he took his dog for a mile hike, and then that Sunday did a cross-country ski race. I mean, that's two days later. Um, and I, I was not everybody's that way, but the vast majority of them are, and they're me, not using their narcotics. Now let me ask you: Do you recommend people do that sort of thing? I mean, just after well, no, because my my limita- <laughs> well, kind of the fun part of this, my limitations are: if it hurts, don't don't do it. Right. And so, kind of one of my fun things is is that I'll, I'll tell them you can do whatever you want. And usually, the wife is sitting there said, "But absolutely no housework for six months." <laughs> and then, and then you can always tell if the if the wife's yeah. listening. She goes, <gasps> "No." <laughs> He, he has to. He, yeah, he, he, he can change the oil in the car, but he can't do laundry. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you were talking about that mesh. Right. This is something you worked on before they were using it in the well, general... Well, there's mesh products have been out for a long, long time, since the early 80s. Uh, and so they have actually progressed on, but it was just a design that we were helping come up with. So, so what is it? Is it something you, that goes inside the intestine or no, it goes, on top of it, like a sleeve? or Well, think of mesh as really very expensive plastic. Okay. And, and that's pretty much what it is. And so what it does, it creates a, a, a mesh or a network or a, a screen, if you want to look at it that way, that you can put into place to cover the hole and suture it into place. So if you have a little tiny hole and you have a big piece of mesh around it, Nothing's going to go through that little. So, hole. so how long does is is the mesh actually under the skin, or is it on top of the skin, or is it part of the dressing, or what? Well, when I'm doing the robot, it's inside the belly, okay, inside the abdomen, above what we call the peritoneum. So I actually open up this lining, put it inside, and tack everything, and sew everything back up. So it's inside the abdomen, so to speak. Now, is it there permanently? Does it dissolve or what? Uh, like I tell folks, you know, 10,000 years from now, when they dig you up, there'll be <laughs> a little pile of dirt and this piece of mesh will still be sitting there looking just like it did on day one. It's it's inert pretty much. It's not going anywhere. This is your permanent impact on the world right here. Right. It's my it's my mesh six-pack. Can I get <laughs> a special inscription on it for the future? Yeah. I'll be a time capsule. <laughs> 
<laughs> Johns will say, don't vote for Trump. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell you what, we're up against a break. Wait, wait. This is health talk, folks, not political talk. We're talking with Dr. Tim Richards uh, from Community Medical Center from day one. We're going to come right back. If you have a question or comment, love to hear from you. What? Uh, that's a great idea, though. I might go get my <laughs> surgery right now. Don't blame me. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, this is Health Talk. Welcome back, everybody. John King is over there. I'm Peter Christian. Joining us in studio, Dr. Tim Richards from Community Medical Center from day one. Go ahead, John. Yeah, we got a caller. Greg couldn't stand the line, but wanted to know, what did they do before mesh? Well, that's actually a great question, because before mesh, the idea was was just... (laughs) No, that's different. Oh, sorry. But um, (laughs) before mesh, it was just closing the hole. And so what you do is you kind of sew up the hole and call it good. The problem with just closing the hole is that that created tension. So when you create tension, uh, it breaks down very easily. So doing that, when you had just the closure of just the hole, or what we just call a primary closure, you had, especially in inguinal hernias, you have about a 10 to 15% recurrence of that hernia. So what mesh does, when you just put the mesh um, behind these things, what that creates is that no tension at all. So you don't have that tension repair. And what the mesh, do, what your body does with the mesh is that it gets ingrowth into that. So it becomes part of your body, so to speak. And so you don't get that tension there. And so you don't get the breakdown. Cool. Okay, let's get to the phone. And Mike is on the line. Mike, you're on with Dr. Tim Richards. Go ahead. Yeah, well, good morning, Doc. This, I'm gonna, they wanted to know how the Perkins were repaired 100 years ago. Mine's dang near that old. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the story about my hernia, and I, and I think it's absolutely hilarious. Because, so I have some violin music uh, in the well, back for you. Should, because it, I, I was at the old age of 18 years old and had to pay for that on the pocket. Here's what happened. I go to, I, I go to the hospital. I'm going to have this hernia. Well, the first thing they do is they hire the local barber to shave you with a straight razor who was a little <laughs> bit dingy. I knew him. Wow. And he said, and I could ruin my reputation if I slipped. Well, okay, that that went by. Well, when they did the operation, and like you said, you close the hole, you stitch it shut. Well, what happened is they stitched it shut a little bit too tight, so my right testicle swelled up like a baseball and stayed that way. I was in the hospital for 10 damn days with this thing. But it's it's held for all these many years, and that was back in about 53. So... But that is how it was done in the old days, and there was some bad side effects. And believe me, walking around with a baseball is not a fun idea. Well, yeah, I, I actually can identify with that in the sense that when I was uh, in the military, we used to keep folks in the hospital for a week after getting their hernia repaired, and we did these primary closures or just closing the hole. Yeah. Uh, we did exactly that. And you're right, you get a lot of swelling, you get a lot of uh, sometimes bleeding in there, so certain parts would turn, you know, colors of purple and blue and uh, yeah. and that's kind of what happened but you know with this these different mes- methods and using the mesh that doesn't happen like that yeah i know because the wife's had every hern is repaired and they used the mesh and then she had to have another operation the doctor forgot there was a mesh there so it kind of screwed, screwed up her scalpel all right, <laughs> all right. well mike thanks, you go with that. thanks for the call appreciate that all right so so uh, going you know back all those years I'm sure that people have all sorts of, uh, of stories about what things used to be like. But now, I mean, literally have come light years when it comes to uh, especially surgery and, and ways that are invasive into your body, doing everything they can to keep that from happening, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, the, the robot's just kind of one of the many things. I mean, surgery and medicine is actually a lot of fun in the sense that, you know, we keep progressing and making things better and better and the way we do things less invasive. And what, what that does is it makes it so that patients, they don't have as much pain, the recovery rate's much much decreased. Now, let me ask you this. Is is the robotic surgery, can it be covered by your, your insurance? Is that part Absolutely. Of the, yeah. okay. the, the, the thing that people have to understand is, one, back to your point earlier, is that the robot is not something that's just doing on its own. It's actually controlled by the surgeon right. who's doing everything. And uh, it doesn't cost any more to have the robot done than it does for an open repair. So it's the exact same cost, the same code and everything that is used by the hospital and by us as surgeons. So you don't get paid any more for doing it. Why would someone choose the other way? Well, um, they're not. I would first off say that not everybody's a candidate for the robot. There's people, you know, they come in who've maybe had 10 different surgeries inside their belly. So I can't get inside their belly safely in order to do things from inside. So they may be an open repair. Okay, we're almost out of time. So so if folks want to get in touch with your office, with Community Medical Center, of course, I know uh, Dr. Tim Richards, how do we contact you? 
Well, you can always call my office. We love to see you. And we're Rocky Mountain Surgical Solutions, and that's 728-0285, uh, 728-0285. And we'd love to see you. Uh, but there's lots of surgeons here in town, and there's only two of us that are actually start. Uh, I've been using the robot the longest for the hernias, but uh, it's uh, actually a cool thing. So we'd love to see you. So would you uh, pretty much uh, uh, recommend that for, like, uh, the majority of, of, of hernia surgeries without complications? Absolutely. I think... I think it's the way things are going to happen. Great. Give us that phone number one more time. 728-0285. And where's your, where your office located? We're on the community campus in building number two, suite 104. Uh, but, yeah, community's a great place. Come on over. Good deal. Thanks a lot. Good to talk to you, the Tim. Appreciate that. That's going to do it for Health Talk for today. We always appreciate our guests from Community Medical Center from day one. Rob Nadelson going to join us at the top of the hour, our constitutional scholar from the Independence Institute. Hope you'll stay with us from 9 to 10.